The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Welcome to this episode of Pit Life Barbecue. Gather round the pit with your hosts, Johnny Mags and Messy Mike. Let's talk barbecue. What's up, everybody? Coming to you live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe in Salem, New Hampshire. It's Pit Life Barbecue, where we talk everything barbecue and a lot of other topics that you would talk around the pit. As always, I'm joined by Messy Mike. Hello. How's, How's it going, bud? Not bad. How you doing? We're doing all right. Excellent. Nice, Excellent. nice, nice. I don't see a cigar in your hand. No, not today. No? No, not today. I, I had you pegged. I had you pegged I almost, after Wednesday almost night. Brought one, almost brought one. I just actually forgot it. <laughs> My fault. Yeah, you're still a rookie. Yeah, I still need to energize the humidor, too. (laughs) We'll get you set up. Yes. Well, first, before we start anything else, I'd like to give a quick shout-out to the one and only Mr. Jonathan on his picture he sent a few weeks ago. A little backed up here. But he improvised on a Sunday, I believe. Oh, the brick? With the pit. with the brick pit, yep, and he in, improvised, turned the the brick grill into he used ceramic fire fire tiles mm-hmm. on top to do a little offset with burning down the wood for the coals, yep, and everything, and uh, produced quite the product. Of a, yeah, uh, it was really going old school. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Yep, you nice. want you want to get down and dirty. That's how it was all. That was how it was done before. Yep. So. Jonathan, we thank you so much for your post. I like the hat, too. And the hat. (laughs) I love haters, baby. Nice post. So today we're talking Wagyu. Wagyu beef. Wagyu Kobe, you know, some myths, some, you know, kind of tips and, you know, to spot Wagyu and Kobe. But um, I just have to bring up one thing, and, you know, it's off topic, but... I've heard, you know, in the past couple of days, you know, people that are just getting smokers, whether they're Smoky Mountains, kettle grills, you know, um, offsets. Before you even load meat into a smoker and, you know, to maintain temperature, don't just throw meat on and be like, oh, I can maintain the temperature. I'm going to get it between 225 and 250. Get your, put your, whether it's, you know, briquettes, lump and wood. Put it in the firebox, put it in your chamber, whatever, and get the thing rolling. Get it to a temperature of 225 and maintain it by itself. No food whatsoever. By, you know, air intake, you know, chimney, up closing the chimney, shutting down the chimney, opening your your intake valves, you know, depending on where they are. Um, That's how you're going to be able to practice and maintain temperature while not ruining any meat and stuff coming out perfectly the next time you actually throw stuff on your pit. You know, the best way, the way I learned was take white bread, put it in your smoker, and light your smoker and get it up to temp. And that's going to show you all the hot spots. So you're going to have, you know, you're going to have pure white bread on, you know, the left or the right, and you may have some darker spots, you know, again, on the left or right, depending on, you know, your smoker or whatever. And that's going to show you where the hot spots are, and that's going to show you the hottest part of the smoker, where to put the larger meats compared to the smaller meats. You know, and the other thing is with your chimney, you don't need a lot of charcoal. Some people will fill a whole chimney, and they might, you know, if you're using a Weber Smoky Mountain, you only need half a chimney. You know, so the, the, one of the main reasons is, one, you know, dirty smoker, but two is you just have too much fuel in there. You know, so take out some fuel and go from there and you'll be able to maintain you know your smoker and you know you'll become a professional at it but you don't always you don't want to do it with meat in there one because now you have volume in there so you know that's going to kind of change the ratio a little bit but once you get it down to all right i can get the temp to 250 225 perfect with nothing in there now let's try and throw some some meat in there you know, and that's, that's what I tell everybody. But the toast test is probably the best way to learn your smoker. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure you had posted that to, the, to our Facebook page. Yes. I don't know if we had swapped it over to the new group page 
but we can do that. So if you want to go check out uh, Pit Life Barbecue Podcast on Facebook, and you can see the article um, with the the bread test that Mike had posted. Yeah, pretty interesting. Find your hot spots. Yeah, it it. I'm telling you, it's a wonder. You know, it's it's helped me out a lot. Wonder bread, no pun intended. Wonder bread, yeah. No free ads. <laughs> yep. But so let's get down to it. We're talking wagyu. Yes. Now. And what is wagyu? I'm telling you right now. I want to be the wagyu cow. Gets to sit around, drink beer, get massaged, <laughs> listen to music, get my hair hair combed, which a little short on top here, but whatever. Back in the day, I had the flowing locks, you know. But that's the cow I want to be, right? Yes and no. Yes and no. What it's, do you mean no? They, they do get their hair brushed. Um, they do have a great diet, whether the diet consists of alcohol um, or, you know, listening to music. That's said to be a myth, but also it's a closed kept secret of what every farmer and breeder does with their cattle. Um, they are definitely kept in a, in a stress-free environment. They are fed, you know, the, be- the best food, you know, grains, grass, um, some bunch of vitamins, nutrients, and, um, you know, but they're also part of a bloodline from Japan. And Wagyu basically just means a Japanese cow. It's all Wagyu stands for. Very easy. And what I also see, there is several areas of Japan that they can be raised in. So uh, yes. Not, so it's specific areas. They can't be, you know, downtown with the hustle and bustle, but more of the rural areas of Japan. Um, yeah, there's um, four main areas in Japan where Wagyu um, will come from. And it's basically, you know, it's a, it's a huge business, you know, so no one's messing around. I mean, you're not going to know, um, you know, diets from one cow to another. Um, you're going to get paperwork, you're going to get bloodlines, you're going to get royalty, um, you know, statements from when the cow was a baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the information I found on the areas was the Matsuzaka beef. Yep. Uh, Kobe beef, which is very well known. Um, Yonazawa beef and Mishima beef. And those are com- coming to carrying areas of the Kobe beef cattle. Yes. But for Kobe to be Kobe, it has to be um, raised and slaughtered in Hyogo, which is a prefecture of Japan. Oh, did I say Kobe? Which Kobe is the capital of that region. So that's the only way Kobe beef is Kobe beef. Um, I want to say I read before 2012, 90... 5%, I think. Um, pretty sure it's 95%. So it's basically just like the Champagne. Champagne can only be called Champagne if it comes from the Champagne region of France. Anywhere else, it is sparkling wine. Correct. Yes. And yes, so about 95% um, of Kobe beef before 2012 was not actually Kobe beef. So in, in the United States, it's a whole marketing ploy of um, you know, oh, we're serving Wagyu, we're serving Kobe. It's, it's a marketing scheme. You know, um, there's so many restaurants that can only serve Kobe beef and Wagyu, um, and they have to be licensed, certified. Um, and I think up till 2016, there was only seven restaurants in the entire country. And the, and the Kobe is outrageous in the restaurants, like 50 bucks an ounce. Bit about 50 bucks an ounce, yes. Crazy. And it is, it is a style of Wagyu. Just from that region, that Kobe is Kobe the capital. Region. Yep, yep. And um, Wag and it's uh, let's see. Up until 2016, um, I believe. Well, up until now, um, J- Japan is not allowed to um, trade Wagyu livestock. So it is illegal to. Uh, import Wagyu livestock to the United States up until this day. Between 1994 and I believe 1998, uh, I think like seven or between seven to 11 um, cows came into the United States. You know, there was a blip in the system somehow, 
and that's basically what started the whole lineage of the American Wagyu. And American Wagyu is because Japanese Wagyu cannot live in um, this environment. The environments are too harsh for the cows. So the reason why they crossbreed them with, you know, um, Angus um, is just so they can last in the winters. And that's where we obviously get the American Wagyu. Correct. Correct. And, yeah, Wagyu, there's a rating system, A through C, and 1 through 5. And A through C has to do with the, the actual um, breed and, um, you know, look, whatever, of the, the actual cow. You know, minus the, the, the skin, the fur, all that stuff, um, the insides. And then you have one through five, which is the actual, you know, tenderness, um, fat content, quality, and all that. So A5 is, is going to be the best meat you've probably ever had in your entire life. And 99% of the people in the United States will never eat that at all. So, Indeed. so when I, I run across these, whether they're real or counterfeit, it always tends to be, you know, the upper echelon of the cuts of beef. Yes. Can, can I get a, a Wagyu brisket? Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. And that's, um, you know, you can get Wagyu briskets. You can get Wagyu, you know, ground beef. You can get... So um, all the same cuts. Correct. It's just that the restaurants focus on the upper end stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah, the Wagyu briskets, um, they use a lot of those in competitions because uh, the marbling um, content and just the way it, it smokes, yeah. um, it's just going to melt right in your mouth. And that's what Wagyu is meant to do. It's meant to melt in your mouth. Right. Um, you know, it's meant to cook for a very short period of time, and the fat just kind of um, renders down so quickly. And, you know, so you're basically so mostly eating fat at, so on a Wagyu So on a brisket, steak. would you cook it less time than a standard brisket, or? That I don't know. I've never cooked a Wagyu brisket. Oh, well, so I'm not going to answer that I question. I caught you. But did you, you've had Wagyu brisket. I've had Wagyu brisket, and it's phenomenal. Um, but I've never, you know, I've never smoked one. But, again, you have people on the competition circuit, like Travis Clark, who can smoke a brisket in six to seven hours you know, or six to eight hours, he does the hot and fast method, and he's a champion pit master. He's been winning competitions left and right with that method. You know, and then you have the guys that still do the, the overnight, um, you know, method. So I think, I don't think the cook time changes. Um, I just think maybe the stall might be a little longer, you know, in, in some instances. But we'll have to try one. Now, you were saying the, the ranking... <coughs> if I will, of the Wagyu, that has to do with the type of cow. Because mm -hmm. there's four breeds of Wagyu cattle. There's the Japanese black, the Japanese brown, also known as Japanese red, mm -hmm. um, Japanese shorthorn, and Japanese pulled. So those are the four types of cattle that are specific specifically Wagyu beef. Yes. So they, sh you had said they shipped them over to probably Texas. Yep. And started the whole process in order to get the American Wagyu. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I've never had Wagyu. I have had A5 Wagyu. And it was at um, a convention, and we were eating it basically like candy. They were um, a Japanese team from, um, obviously, Japan. <laughs> um, brought a huge piece of um, A5-grade Wagyu and was doing the demonstrations and, you know, cooking classes. Um, and so they would just, they cooked it up and then just served it. And it was, for a little bit, I couldn't eat any other meat besides that, which I'd never have that again. <laughs> so I couldn't eat meat for a long time after that. For Spoiled a little bit. yourself. Exactly. You? Yep. Yeah, I did. I had the Kobe beef. Um, we were in New York for something. There was a bunch of guys, and we were at a at a bar late night. And they that's what they serve is Kobe beef sliders, and they were incredible, the best burger I've ever had in my life. And I've had them all over the world. Trust me, I'm a burger fan. But these were, it was. When you mouth watering doesn't do it justice. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
it's truly an experience. Yes. You know, and you know, and it's all in if you're willing to pay for it at some of these restaurants. Oh, like correct. you said, the Kobe's fifty bucks an ounce. You know, what's a stray wagyu, you know steak? Like some like, you know, um you can find two hundred to two hundred and fifty dollars a pound, you know, for some of this for some of this stuff. So I mean that's crazy. Like brisket, wagyu brisket's gonna cost you uh Probably like a nine, ten pound brisket's probably gonna cost you a couple hundred bucks. Probably one hundred and fifty to two, two hundred bucks, two twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. You know, so you don't want to mess up that piece of meat. Yeah. You know, you want to really know what you're doing. Um, but again, that wins competitions. You know, so there is something to say about wagyu. Yeah, because I also found. Um, and they're not. Go ahead. <clears throat> getting into what like the the marbling and the breakdown it's the uh the wagyu cattle's genetic predisposition they say yields a beef that contain a higher percentage of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids than regular beef Mm -hmm. so that's all based on the diet and correct everything they're doing over there completely changes how the how the cattle grows Mm -hmm. to produce this yep yep the fat melts at a lower temperature you know so you get the more perfect silver you know um raw product it just melts on the tongue you know and it it's just it's rich it's sumptuous it's just an experience like you've never had you know and um it's yeah but it's it's a bloodline you know um and that's what i need to or that's what i want to kind of express it's a bloodline so, you know, you can't just throw a cow in a pen and say, oh, this is Wagyu. You know, you can't take a cow from Japan and bring it over here and say it's Wagyu. It's a bloodline. Not every cow from Japan is Wagyu. You know, like you said, there's the four regions. Um, they have to have the paperwork. Um, they have to have the bloodline. You know, it's like royalty. You know, it's, it's like, you know, you, um, the king and queen of England. Yeah. You know, you're, you're born into it. You're lucky, you know, but you're born into it, and that's your heritage, and that's your whole, you know, lineage. That's the same thing with, with a Wagyu cow from, you know, one of the areas of Japan. So to become a Wagyu beef cattle, you basically got to get the, be on the right draw on the right crazy night. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> you hit the lottery. Yep. That is wild. Oh, yeah. But so it's, so it's a lot like the... Um, the thoroughbred racing for the horses. Exactly. You know, not a regular racehorse, but we're talking Kentucky Derby, Preakness, Breeders' Cup, that type of lineage. Yep. Yep. It, everything's everything's um, based basically on the breed. The breed lines are carefully traced and tracked. Um, you know, basically detailed provenance is where your beef comes from. Um, you know, everything's monitored down to the line, the prize bulls, and everything's numbered with a pedigree, um, you know, number. Everything, it's just, you know, it's, it's crazy. It's a serious business, you know. I'm, it's probably, you know, 90, 95% of Japan's, you know. So it's Ancestry.com for beef. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> you know, it, the few times I've had, Kobe beef. The thing that really strikes me is the the texture is different and it has a mouth feel to it. You know, it coats the whole palate with that luscious, yeah, fat. <laughs> you know, it really is a, an experience. And I've also found, yeah, it's very expensive, but I'm usually satisfied with a smaller portion of yes. that than a larger, you know, one of something else. Yeah, and that's what um. So in Japan, the the higher the grade of the wagyu. They don't serve it like we do. You know, they'll serve it in small bite-sized right. portions, you know, kind of a, a, a filler with rice. Um, but only here, you know, we're doing the big cuts and we want right. the steaks. and My 32-ounce ribeye. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so while over there it's more of a... It's a delicacy. Delicacy, more... Sa- they want you to savor it, yep. that, everything that's gone into it, producing that cattle. Correct. Interesting. Yep. And Ian, how do you know it was real Kobe? I don't. Okay. I didn't see any <laughs> certification or no paperwork, but, uh, you know, I think other cultures too, especially, 
in Asia, meat isn't the star of the meal. It's an ingredient, you know, so it, it's not featured. Here's a big hunk of meat on a plate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's incorporated into a more complete meal. Yes. Everything's more complex over there. Yes, it is. Yes. We're simple people, though. <laughs> yep. <laughs> simple but very complex <laughs> at the same time. Oh, so I think we got to find some Wagyu beef. Well, I think you should make some and bring it. Oh, that that, that would be definitely. fantastic. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get like a Wagyu brisket, you know. We won't tell the wives so they don't know what we spent. And Snake River Farms is a huge um, Wagyu purveyor. So Really? Yeah, so if you're going to, you know, um, pretty much where all the competitions go and, and even, you know, Restaurants, um, Snake River Farms is probably one of the biggest uh, Wagyu farms in the country. And, you know, that's, that's where mostly everybody's going. And I'd say, uh, you know, quite a few of them are in Texas because that's where, the, you know, the Japanese cows were shipped in the, in the very beginning. You know, when they did kind of slip through the cracks, um, they were shipped to Texas. So if you're going to find Wagyu, you're going to basically – you know, be looking in Texas somewhere. So we could go on their website. Yep. In oh, yeah. Snake River Farms. one right up. Correct. Regardless of who we are, we don't need anything special. Nope. You can just go in there, order. Do they come in specific, do you know if they come in specific sizes or? Yes, the briskets do come in specific sizes. So it's not, nothing's there really cut to order. Unless no. maybe it's. No, it's all frozen. All frozen. Yes. And shipped to you. Correct. And, and it'll probably say around their website, you know, uh, 8 to 10 pounds, 12 to 14, you know, 14 to or 15 to 17. Nothing exact. Nope. Nope. But Just you'll have, you know, you'll, be able, you'll have your choices. In the ballpark. So all you really need is a, a lot of money. Correct. <laughs> yes. Now, here's one. If you're going to spend this amount of money, say on a Wagyu brisket, mm -hmm. In your opinion, how would you cook it? Would you put a rub on it? Or would you go straight, like a straight salt and pepper, that's it? To, so nothing really impedes on the actual flavor of the beef. Hmm. That is a good question. Um, I, would probably, I would probably just salt, pepper, garlic, um, you know, just so you're still tasting the meat. You don't really want anything masking the meat. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like that. Uh, have you seen the, the skit where the guy comes over with the hamburgers and he's like, oh, these are Kobe burgers. And the guy's grilling and he's like, oh, you're going to put these Kobe burgers next to those frozen patties. <laughs> you know, he's like, oh, I, you know, not to be rude, but I don't park my Cadillac next to you. You know, your Honda. <laughs> you know, so you, you want to taste the beef. You don't want to, you know, you want to you want to get that flavor profile. You want it to melt in your mouth. You don't want to mask it. If you're paying that much money, yeah. you know, you want to do very little possible yeah because that's what i was it. thinking if i'm spending an obscene amount on a, on a, this co this wagyu piece of meat i don't want to douse it with anything no you know just a quick little season on both sides salt and pepper like you said the garlic and that's it i'm putting no rub no added flavors nothing because mm -hmm. i want to taste exactly what the hype is yes I'd probably be afraid to cook it. <laughs> I'd probably just right. look at it. And, you know, with this high fat content, do we anticipate a lot of shrinkage? I would say you'd probably get, yeah, I'd probably say 50 to uh, six, 55 to 60, mm. you know, um, shrinkage. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the end, you've spent a lot of money and you've got a little piece of hopefully very high quality beef. Yes. Well, plus you're trimming it too. So now you're trimming right. it and it shrinks. <laughs> Doesn't seem right. No. 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 And I mean, there's some, you know, there's some barbecue places that are using it, um, you know, or, you know, they say they're using it. Um, where they get it from, who knows? But, you know, there are those barbecue places that will have, you know, some places will have regular, but then they'll be like, oh, would you want the Wagyu brisket, you know, for this much money? And I've talked to a couple of them, and, I mean, they say they probably sell one brisket of the Wagyu type like a week, you know, to customers. And is there any place around this area in the northeast? 
Uh, that does or? There is. There is? Yes. Okay. There is. So, but I will, um, I'll let people find it themselves. Find it themselves. Yes. So you might have to take a road trip. Correct. So, yep. what, uh, so what else you got going on? Nothing much. Nothing there? Nope. That's it? That is it. All right. You know, for a future show, I might like to hear about how do I go about cleaning my smoker, right? The season's almost done now. What is it I got to do to be ready for Throw it out and spring? get a new one. <laughs> 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 That's the easy approach. No, yeah. um, I mean, power washing. You know, yeah. it's, it's a messy job, but power washing. Just blast it. Yep. Yep. And then always make sure you season it after you power wash it again. All right. All right, well, that's it for this week. We'd like to thank you all for joining us. We'd love to hear from you. Send your questions and comments to pitlifebbqpodcast at gmail.com. On social media, find us on YouTube and Facebook at Pit Life Barbecue Podcast or also the Pit Life Barbecue group page on Facebook. Uh, can't catch us live? Find us on iTunes and other podcast carriers. If you're enjoying the show, please, like always, subscribe like and review and share and uh tell your friends let's uh let's get this get going. some topics get some topics coming in anything you want to talk about let drop yeah. us a line and we'll figure it all out but uh until next week keep the smoke rolling Expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.